Okay, welcome back everybody to the second video for Monday's discussion of inverses. So in the previous video, we introduced what an inverse was, and we learned how to verify whether or not two functions are in fact inverses. But we also need to talk about how you find them. So finding an inverse, and let's be more specific, they don't always exist. So if one of them exists. So there is a sequence of steps that you can go through, and if you do them in exactly this order, it will make finding inverses a lot easier. So step one, let's replace the f of x notation with y. So go ahead and just do that replacement. Then switch x and y. Now, think about why you're doing this. Remember, for inverses, domain and range switch places. So you need to physically switch those in the equation. Then we will solve for what I will call the new y. And then for the last step, let's just get back into function notation. So we will replace this new y notation with inverse notation. So part one, part two, and part four are really straightforward. That's the easy part. It's part three that's a little bit difficult. So let's just look at an example. Let's find the inverse of f of x equals 4x minus 5. So step one, get out of function notation and replace it with y. Step two, switch x and y. So literally just switch them. Step three, solve for y. So here's where you would need to do a little bit of a review, perhaps, from section 1.3 and 1.5. But we'll just do the solving here by first adding 5 to both sides and then divide both sides by 4. So there is the solution. Then put this back in inverse notation. Now, keep in mind, it doesn't matter that I switched these equalities, have symmetry across the equal symbol. So I just moved the y to the other side and then wrote it in function notation. So there is our inverse. Now, of course, you can check this with the compositions, just like we did in the previous video. So the next thing that we should discuss in this section is what are known as one-to-one -one functions. So a one-to-one -one function has a very specific definition. Let's say that a function f is considered one-to-one, -one, so sometimes I'll shorthand, if, f of a equals f of b implies a equals b. So that's the definition in its most general sense. Stated in English, different input values, so maybe we'll call them x's, always produce different y's or outputs. So if I have two different x values along the horizontal, they cannot share the same y value. They must be offset. Now, the easy way to tell if something is one-to-one -one is that it should do this, pass the horizontal line test. 
So we used the vertical line test just to determine whether or not we had functions. We now use the horizontal line test to determine whether or not those functions are one to one. So same idea, any horizontal line that you draw on your function should hit the function at most once. So remember, not all functions have inverses. So for example, let's look at the following. Given f of x equals x squared. So first, you could think about this just in terms of the table. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. So I'd have 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. Or you can think of it in terms of its graph. I'll just sketch the basic graph. So you will notice that this is not invertible, which is another way of saying it does not have an inverse for two reasons. The first one, probably in my opinion, the most obvious as a visual learner is that it fails the horizontal line test. The other reason is because, as we stated in English, if you have different x values, they better produce different y values, and they did not. So the dotted line is another way of saying that same information. So it, we can see which ones aren't one to one, but let's see if we can show when a function is one to one. So for my next example, let's show algebraically that the linear function 4x minus 6 is 1 to 1. So what I mean is let's use the definition. So we need to show that f of a equals f of b implies that a equals b. So let's go ahead and just start with our assumption f of a equals f of b. So 4a minus 6 equals 4b minus 6. Then what we'll notice is we can start to clean this up. The sixes will cancel, as do the fours. So sure enough, when we started with f of a equaling f of b, that implied a equals b. So let's go back to our quadratic. Let's show algebraically that the parabola is not one-to-one. -one. That way you can kind of compare and contrast. So what we'll show in this example is that if we start with f of a equaling f of b, then this might not be the only solution. So f of a equals f of b implies that a squared equals b squared. But here's where the problem lies. When I square root these things, I have a plus or minus on both sides. So what that tells me is that A equals B, so it did satisfy this, but the problem is A could also equal negative B. So this is the issue. We can't have that in the definition. That's where you see the horizontal line failing. So it's because of that that you have a problem. Okay, so in our third and final video, I would like to take a look at a couple of graphs and tables that deal with inverses. So we will return for